I'm Matt Harnicky and I just flew my horse Chase from Australia all the way to the Netherlands. They, they flew over there with Emirates Airlines on a 777, Boeing 777. The crate that they actually went in accommodates three horses, but we just had the two on board, so that gave them a little extra space each. Um, the grooms can access the horses, and they need to throughout the flight. They need to make sure that they've got access to feed and water through the journey. And just general health checks along the way to make sure that they are comfortable um, and that they're, they're behaving and that they're uh, getting on because they're right next to each other. The takeoff was quite smooth. Um, as soon as uh, we were allowed to go back and check on the horses, we did, and they, they were fine through takeoff. Um, and we were actually able to go quite quickly to the horses, so the plane was still um, quite elevated when we went up there. So we are just heading now to check how takeoff was. Uh, and it was quite surreal to be standing on a plane and it was kind of heading up quite steep and we had a little bit of turbulence and I was there and the horses were really reacting quite well and we're very much on a hill right now <laughs> This was fine, it was almost like he was taking it as if he was in a float. And then uh, once we checked all the horses and we made sure they were fine, we kind of uh, settled down and um, we went uh, back to the uh, area, to our area where we were sitting. Peter, uh, Chris and I, we were just chatting along, showing a few experiences and I was also getting a bit more information from Peter on um, what we could do to help the horses along the way. Uh, because at this point we were on our first leg of the journey. So what we're doing now is we're actually trying to get the horses to have a drink. Um, it's very important that they stay hydrated. But as Pete just told us, um, it's quite cold here on the place, so I don't think the horses don't really feel the need to drink. Uh, but it's good to try and offer it to them as much as we can. Um, we're actually 30 minutes out from uh, landing. So that flight was the longest flight, I believe. It was nine and a half hours, uh, which I slept most of it. <laughs> I, um, I tried to go back and check and chase as much as I could, but it is important uh, when you uh, are flying them to give them their own space just so they can sleep and relax and just take it easy. He's actually been quite quiet in here. Uh, there's not much room for him to actually move around, um, but he's also definitely not squished in. The boots are still on, everything is still fine. It is a bit of a long travel time for them, so apart from that, I think we're all set. just landed and we're gonna go check on the horses to make sure they're all good. Um, the landing was smooth but of course as smooth as it can get so it's still quite rough. We have an apple. So let's go see how they are. My horse actually likes to take small bites so Oh, oh, and it's all going, and it's... 
that's it. Those are the small boats. <laughs> Sydney to Hong Kong was about nine hours. Um, and then, as I said, they had a two hour break there and a refuel. Um, didn't change aircraft, stayed on the same aircraft and went through for a further six and a half hours to Dubai. So we have one pallet that has to go uh, in front of the horses, so that's going to be uh, put in front, pushed up, and the horses will go back up again. That way we can fit everything, because apparently we have a very full flight. Um, so... This is what's going to be coming in in front of them. And then they're all going to slide up the front. The horses are actually going to get moved up to here. So when we unload in Dubai, that way when we unload in Dubai, they're going to be the last ones to be taken out because it's going to be very hot there even though we land early in the morning. Um, so first things first, all this stuff has to get out here in Hong Kong. Then our horses get moved up to BL. Um, so they'll be nice and close to us. Um, and then obviously when we have to unload in Dubai, everything that's at the back will get taken out first and then our horses will follow. So uh, once we took all the new cargo on board, um, same thing, headed back out to the runway, uh, lift off, we went back to check on the horses, they were all fine. Um, and that flight was about eight hours, I believe. Um, and uh, Chris and Peter took the two little bedrooms, uh, well, two little bunk beds inside the plane. And I slept in the seats provided uh, in the general area. Um, and I must say I'm quite lucky because I slept for, I think, six hours straight. It felt like, I think, I don't know, it was probably because the timing was when it was nighttime in Australia. Uh, but I slept so like comfortably and so easy and I knew that Peter was there to make sure the horses were being checked over um, every two to three hours. So I knew uh, Chase was in good hands and I was able to relax and just have a sleep as well uh, because this whole process for me was very stressful as well. Uh, but I'm very, very lucky that uh, Equine International Air Freight was there to help me through it and, and to make sure people like Peter were there to make me feel comfortable and safe and let me relax as well. We are just about to land into Dubai. I slept for like seven hours. Um, we're just on the runway now. About to touch down. Oh. Oh, that was my good horse to good. Um, and now we have to change. itself was very smooth. I slept for most of it. Um, and now, as you can see behind me, they are just starting to unload everything and we're going to be actually going on this aircraft right here, which is um, a bit bigger than we're in now. Um, the horses were good. They're still back here. They're going to be one of the last ones to leave. They're right there. Um, so they can stay in the air conditioning for as long as possible. Um, and then after that, it's going to be about a six hour, six, seven hour journey to Luxembourg. So once landed in Dubai, uh, the, all the cargo from the first plane was removed um, and uh, the horses eventually followed as the last uh, item to come off the plane. Uh, and then once the horses uh, left uh, the plane, they were put in front of the 747 uh, in the middle of the, uh, of the night in uh, Dubai. I think it was maybe like 1 a.m. It was very early morning. Um, and it was still quite hot, but not too hot. And this is what um, Equine International Air Freight made sure that we had a flight that was landing at a time where the horses wouldn't have to stand under sun. Uh, we were in the coolest part of the day for Dubai, which was still very humid and maybe probably 33, 34 degrees. We're up to like the last third of the trip. Um, after that, we are gonna be in Luxembourg. It's gonna be a lot easier for them. It's gonna be a lot less noisy. Um, something that I also didn't really consider with travel is, of course, you know that when you go to the airport it's noisy, uh, but here it's extra noisy. So, yeah, so I'll um, keep the horses company, make sure they're all doing well, and check back with you when I'm on the plane. We loaded up the 747, made sure they were all okay. Then uh, we had liftoff, horses were fine, 
and I was actually allowed to sleep in a little bedroom on the 747 on the second floor, uh, which was very comfortable, surprisingly. Okay, so this is gonna be our next plane for the next, well, for the last journey. Um, let's look what's behind here. Oh, there's a little sleeping area, one here. And another one on this side. Really nice. Um, then we've got our seats. Obviously there's no entertainment on these seats, which is why I try to have as many movies and stuff on my own as possible. That's the stairs. We have a little kitchen area right here. And then obviously the toilet as well right here. Um, I had a full bed, a duvet, a pillow, I could really stretch out. And it was so crazy to have almost like a little room with a bed on a plane. And then right outside the window, I could see the clouds. It was super, super surreal. Right now they're currently, I'll just look this up where they are on our flight radar, but they're currently just over, just over the southern part of Turkey on their way into Luxembourg airport. Okay, good morning. It is probably five or six hours after I signed off. Um, we are going to be starting our descent very soon, so thank God I slept through most of that. Um, let's go down and check on Chase. I know Peter's been checking on Chase and everything's been going well, uh, but I do like to do it myself as well. Um, just need to pack my things in my little room, just down here. Um, and then, uh, yeah, not long, I'm going to be in Luxembourg, which I'm super, super excited about. So we just landed, the doors have been opened, let's go check on the horses, I can hardly fit through this corridor. Uh, we're finally in Luxembourg, it's 12 degrees outside so it's pretty freaking cold. Um, but the horses have travelled well, I checked on them before we landed, let's see how they are again. We're just closing it all up, hey Chasey, um, we're closing them all up because we are going to have to unload now. Uh, and we don't get want them to get too scared by the whole adventure. So let's go out on the outside and we'll catch them coming down. But yeah, that's the flying part of this journey done. We're still a long way from being home, uh, being at the new place, settling in, but this is the main big bit and at least it's done. The weather was not as warm as Dubai. It was raining, maybe like 15 degrees. Um, and we were able to get the horses off first and we quickly traveled to the holding area where the horses were going to be. Uh, once we arrived at the holding area, uh, they lifted the crate uh, onto a platform that would then lower it to ground level. Um, and then we opened it up, uh, the horses came out and I walked Chase uh, to his stable and he could finally stretch out, put his head down fully. Both horses were very quiet and very tired. They were just kind of standing in the stable, sleeping and just chilling out, which was good. We unloaded all of my <laughs> stuff from the cr uh, crate, which was a lot. Um, and nothing was damaged. Everything was just, uh, just how I left it. Um, and we set that out. And then what we had to do then is we had to wait for clearance from the vets. Um, so once we got clearance from the vets, we were able to hop into the truck, uh, go grab Chase. We loaded him up fine. Everything uh, went really smoothly there. Uh, we traveled we traveled probably almost two and a half hours to the uh, stables uh, at the bottom of the Netherlands. And once we arrived there, I took Chase off, popped him in a stable, made sure he had something to eat quick if he wanted to. Uh, and then I brought him out to a small um, yard area so he could have a bit of a run around and a bit of a stretch and just, you know, just have a bit more space. But once I felt he was comfortable, everything uh, was, was done and settled. Uh, I went and had to sleep myself in the room that I was given uh, to stay there overnight. Okay, so it is the morning of... I've traveled so much I don't know what day it is. It's Tuesday the 15th. Um, it is almost 8 a.m. Uh, and I'm gonna go check on Chase. I had a bit of a sleepless night only because I was a bit excited um, about today and moving and having everything said. I was also a little bit worried about Chase. Um, so at about 5 a.m. I went and checked up on him. Uh, the last check I did on him was around uh, 12.31 a.m. last night. Um, and he was fine, he ate a little bit, he drank. 
Um, and I actually caught him lying down. He was having a bit of a sleep. He was very tired. Um, and then I walked out here around 5.30 a.m. to check on him again. Uh, I listened to his stomach to see if there was gut sounds because I was a bit worried about colic, if any of that was going to happen. Uh, and that was all good. And he, he had eaten a little bit and he was eating some hay and he was just having a snooze. I think he's very tired. So let's go check on him this morning. I want to definitely, uh, I want to definitely take him out for a bit of a walk, get him stretching his legs. Um, and then I'm going to get him ready for uh, the transport company to take him, make sure all his stuff's packed. And I'm going to go ahead and drive uh, ahead of the truck and make sure the stables and everything is ready. So let's go see, let's go see how he's doing this morning. How are you doing? Um, what I also checked is if he had water uh, when I came down at 5 a.m. and he did. And I also uh, just pinched his coat to see how fast I was going back. And he's a little bit dehydrated, which is also kind of normal and expected. I'm gonna keep an eye on that and I'll definitely uh, have him on some electrolytes when I get back uh, to the other place because that reflex is just a little bit slow. Um, and then I checked his gums as well before and it was, um, if you press them and the color comes back kind of quick and it doesn't stay white for too long, it's a good sign. So it uh, could be a little bit better, could be a little bit pinker, but it's not too bad all in all. Um, but I think what I want to do now is I want to take him out, give him a bit of a walk. Maybe he wants to have a bit of a uh, pick of grass. This is the first taste of Dutch grass and well, looks hungry. So Chase was then uh, put back into the stable. He was then brought from the stable to the truck where he was then brought to the stables where he is now. It's a small stable, it's, uh, f we have five stables in total and I'm here um, with uh, Yes Adred and his horses as well. Two years ago I met Matt through Instagram, we became really good friends and now Chase is in Holland and now our horses are at the same stable. I think there's a big difference with the horses in Australia and how the horses um, are here in Holland. Also because of the climate in Australia is of course a lot warmer, um, in Holland is a lot of rain. Uh, so I think it's really different now Chase is in Holland, he will have to get used to it. Um, I think there's so much more grass here if you look in the paddock as in Australia because I've been there to Sydney where Chase also was and it was really dry there and if it rained one day Chase had a rather colic. So it was really yeah, a bit scary to see how Chase will react here in Holland um, but he's actually doing pretty good. When Chase just came here I noticed that of course it was a lot has happened so he, yeah, he was just a bit distant and he was a bit shocked from everything. Um, but he just needed some days and he was in the paddock and he was always alone in the paddock in Australia. And now uh, he saw the other horses being together because I have my horses always together in a group. And Chase was just a bit walking and pacing. I was actually, yeah, we didn't expect it because it was a bit scary to see how he would do uh, when he was with other horses. But then at one point we put him with the other horses and I think he really liked it and he had a lot of fun. And now he's uh, really happy and chill. And it's actually really excited that, we're, that we have the horses at the same stable now uh, because Matt can help me with riding the horses. And in the beginning, Matt only did yeah, the dressage with Chase, but now we've also started doing a little bit of what I do with the horses. And then when Matt is gone, I can take care of Chase, I can work with Chase. So uh, we can really help each other and have fun with the horses. It's of course a really, really big step for Matt and Chase. So I'm really happy to see that they're both really happy and they're all settled in now. So I think they're having a really good future in front of them. I'm really excited for tomorrow because we have a few products coming from the Parvo range. Um, so we're going to see what Chase likes to eat, what he doesn't because he's very picky. Um, and we're going to see also what they think about his weight now, where he should be at, um, what the grass is like here, the hay he's getting. They're going to really look at everything and let me know what he needs, what he doesn't need and what product is going to work best. Hi Rob, how are you? Very good, thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Yes, I've got a very big client for you today. He's just flown in from Australia. I heard. Um, yeah. He's picky. We've got a picky, picky horse. Um, but I have kind of found a stable diet for him now. But I would like to have a diet that I can kind of work with him a little bit further once I start, you know, increasing yeah. his work levels. And I'd like us to have a look at the fields and you can get to know him a little bit, see his shape and see what you think. We'll do that. Okay, yeah, let's, go, let's yeah. go check him out. Then. Okay. So he's not skinny. Um, but he has lost a little bit of muscle and weight since coming here, just because of the whole journey. There could be a bit more muscle on top line. Yeah, yeah I always so said I think, he's got yeah. a bit of a weak back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. always. That's always and been also, a thing. Also on his... Uh, a rump. Ideally, I would like to work him about, about five, five days a week. Yeah. 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 
And you work 45 minutes yourself or do you have somebody uh, helping you? Myself, uh, well, I mean, I had my full-time coach in Australia um, and then hopefully I'll find somebody, somebody here that I also like yeah. and I'll get coached. He wasn't really eating, so the only stuff he was really eating was the grass. So, so I was like, just go for yeah. it. And I kept an eye on him at first. He only had a couple of hours. And how but long was, is that the, the field there? Yeah, the, that's the field down there. So it's quite short. Uh, the uh, well, the, it's these two front ones. We haven't, we actually just cut the back one into hay. Because ah, okay. it was quite long. Yeah. Um, but he's, he's on it for at least 12 hours. As a sports feed, you want him to eat something. Yeah, a little, a little bit, bit more. more. Energy. Well, I, I brought the muesli, which I hope he will eat, uh, yep. which is the end muesli I want to get him to. Pop this through here. That seems positive, doesn't it? Yeah, no, really positive. I'm, um, you know, feeding is something that can be so stressful for me because I've, I've worked really hard to get my horse happy and healthy and you know at a state where I'm, I'm comfortable with working him and he's comfortable with taking the work so for me it's very important that he does get the right nutrition to make sure I can maintain that and I can move forward in, in my training and also in, in his health so <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have a look at a few of the Parvo products um, that Rob has brought for us today and we're gonna see what in the range kind of fits my bill in the sense of um, you know energy intake and, and nutrition for him uh, and then also my horse is very picky, so also what he'll also want to eat. So we're going to go check those out now um, and see and see what we can do for him. Let's try if he eats this. Yes. Yeah. It's this side. <laughs> yeah, he's trying it. Come on, focus. <laughs> Sure that's weird yeah. that's strange i really thought he was gonna like this maybe this this one isn't his favorite maybe this that's is the muesli let's see what he does with that it looks so very if good if you look at it you see a mixture of pellets and puffed cereals okay and the cereals are puffed to get this would the be the cereal no yeah that's a cereal oh, that's a cereal yeah so uh, you see uh, puff maize puff, puff barley um, and it's puffed because then the horse can really get almost a full 100% of energy value that's in the uh, cereals out I of see. it. Oh yes, we've got no problems here. <laughs> no problems here. <laughs> we've, we've passed the test. Yeah. So uh, I'm very happy that he eats yeah. the sparse fit as, uh, as his basic feed. No, absolutely. Yeah, that is the product that we really want him to eat. And uh, I think we, uh, since um, or it's good to mix that sparse feed a little bit with some roughage. Yep. Uh, that can be the Lutzen chaff and... Uh, yeah, which we had over there. Have. Now I've got a good diet to go on and I feel confident that I can like increase the workload yeah. a little bit and nothing will get affected. Okay, yeah. perfect. I'm uh, very happy. I hope you are too. Yes, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. And so is, so is he. Oh, so that's yeah. the main thing. Yeah, that is the main thing. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah. Enjoy the See rest of your day. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. Um, for, for me, it hasn't been too difficult uh, coming here and adapting, especially because every day has been so busy with uh, just unpacking or getting things ready or changing things or even like uh, other work stuff that's, that's happening apart from all of this. So for me, it's kind of been coming here, go, go, go. I've had to buy a new car. There's been a lot of, lot of different things that have happened in this week that I've been here. Um, so I haven't really noticed uh, anything too much. Um, and I've talked to my parents and my friends back home and they're, they're all, you know, like we keep in contact often and I'm sharing with them my experience about how everything's going. Um, so yeah, I mean, I was quite stressed to begin with uh, when I first came, but you know, with change and, and anytime you do something like this big, obviously it's gonna come with, uh, you know, different emotions and it's quite conflicting because at one point you're very relieved you're here and then your horse is still not sell, so you're stressed and you've got to sort out like, insurance here, you gotta buy a car, and there's all these different things happening. So for me, it was just about hitting little goals every day until you get to a point where you start to have your own things and you start to get comfortable again. We've had a few small jobs to do here at the stable as well and um, make sure that it was all ready and how we wanted it as well. So it's been, it's been also fun. I've had a lot of fun being able to put like my little like, uh, my little uh, styling and ideas and, and managing my own horse in the way I want, of course, uh, with Yessa as well, doing all that. So it's, I like that now I have the control of doing that myself and being here with my horse. And if I want to go to my horse, it's just, it takes like two seconds to get to him um, rather than like, you know, having to drive for 45 minutes in Australia. So I have really set up a life here that I've always wanted and it's been a massive dream come true. Um, and I'm very fortunate every day to wake up and be able to live a life that makes me fully happy. 
But overall, really having seen the experience I got had with Chase, um, how Equine International Air Freight treated uh, both Chase and I, and how the journey went, how Chase tackled everything. Now, settling down and getting a few things done myself, I really couldn't be happier with how everything went. Um, and I'm really excited for the future in the next few months to come to see and start to reveal everything that I'm working on as well. I can't believe Matt's really going to horse event. There are going to be thousands of people watching him and expecting him. I heard there were like thousands of people coming there, so, and you have to really ride your best because you want to show everyone how good you, uh, you are with the horse. I honestly have no idea how it's going to go. 20 minutes till the show. Yeah, we only have 20, so we have to, <laughs> I have to hurry. We have to get going. I'm actually really, really nervous about today in general, but especially, I don't know, meeting so many people, it's so overwhelming and I mean, I don't even know if anyone's gonna be there. But I've never really done something like this. No, before. and I never do things like this either, exactly. My line of work is completely different. Oh